Hello everybody, I hope that you are doing well. Uh, before we get started, uh, let me emphasize the fact that we are in the middle of a fundraiser. If you believe in the work uh, that I do and the work that is being done through the Odyssey Project, I uh, ask that you do look in the description box and uh, show some love, donate, show some love for the work we're doing. There's so much more work to be done. Now, what I'm about to talk to you about, I am immensely passionate about. I think that anybody who has followed me for a minimum of a few months would know this by now. For those who have followed me for years that I consistently see show up on these videos, uh, I know you know that I have a passion. Uh, I love my sisters. Uh, I've done a great deal of work with our women. Uh, I am one of the it first, if not the first, to sound the clarion and the alarm from a mental health perspective on the large number of black women suffering from childhood sexual abuse, incest over two decades ago. Uh, but you know I have a passion for healing uh, what's wrong in the area of black manhood and that starts with properly developing and preparing young black boys it was frederick Douglass that said that uh, it is much easier to build strong children than it is to repair broken men and broken men tend to break things and so i am here and i don't know how old videos are you know sometimes old videos resurface uh, so I don't know how old it is, but uh, someone sent me a video of a young black sister who uh, was literally hit in the face with a brick because she refused to give a young black male her phone number. The easiest response to it is what most people are doing on this post. Evil, trash all of the things that you can easily assess and assert to someone especially a black man that would do that to a black woman behind what he considered to be rejection other people are going to say it's a fragile ego and uh, and a bunch of other things what it is is a failure on our part to properly develop young black males i have talked about this literally for two decades that we have failed tremendously in the area of proper racial socialization the need to really truly develop proper self-image self-esteem and self-confidence in young black boys with an awareness of their destiny their future their responsibilities and their purpose as they grow older in other words you don't let a kid get to 14 and 15 and start talking about what you're going to do as a man no other group is doing that everybody has rites of passages things that they start teaching their young boys as early as three four and five years old and they get a rite of passage at 12 and 13 and then they start carrying out what they've learned to that point as they grow in and, and are incrementally given uh, responsibilities as they age so they literally walk into manhood knowing how to carry what they're going to be responsible for carrying I told you this 20 years ago I told you this 15 years ago I told you this 10 years ago and every year since that if we don't start properly racially socializing young black males they're going to be the death of our girls we're literally turning over our girls to young black males who aren't and you see that I'm not using the word man male is their gender assignment man has a qualification and it's not perfection but it is protection it is provision it is a level of covering and 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 the capacity to create a safe environment for our women and our children and our elderly and when we don't have that when our women and our children and i i saw another case or excuse me i saw another case where kids literally going into 
homes of 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 people who are far beyond the age of their parents and robbing and shooting but they look like them now i'm not advocating going in anybody house, anybody's house and shooting them and robbing them but we definitely don't want you going into the homes of the people who look like you in in in, in committing these heinous crimes now uh, again i'm not for the crime at all i'm for the development and the preparation i'm for the assessment of awareness into who you are and what you are to become i am for presenting young black males young black uh prepubescent and adolescent males models through which they can observe real authentic black manhood not perfection but someone striving to be a leader someone striving to be a protector someone striving to be a covering someone striving to provide an environment in which the people in their periphery can feel safe i want them to see how much in, uh they mean to this to the, to this community and when they step out of line and when they go left they cause damage in numerous ways number one when we don't properly racially socialize them, they become criminal minded. Um, they become misguided, misled, misinformed, uh, misdirected, and they get involved in things that don't serve the progression, not only of themselves, but of those that they are supposed to be responsible for. And so then what happens? They become criminal minded and then they go away. And we talk constantly about the 1.5 million black men who are missing. Well, 1.3 of those are in American prisons, U.S. prisons. And 70 percent of those upon their first release will recidivate in three years. 80 will have recidiv 80 percent will have recidivated by five years that means they're being cycled and institutionalized into poor behavior and they can't serve a purpose in the community they've been hardened to what they're responsible for they've been hardened to the need for their protection they've been hardened to the need for their care and their concern and their love and they're pushing back because they haven't understood and been given the direction and the information and the love and the embrace and the guidance necessary to sit up and say, this is who you are. This is what you're going to become. You are so necessary, but you can't buy into these erroneous ideas of who you are. You can't let the imagery being projected to you by the media define you. You're better than that. You cannot allow what you hear on the radio to give you an idea of what you should be doing. You're better than that. You're going to have to be willing to go out and do some things and hold yourself together and hold yourself up because your offspring are going to need you present. They, we lose losing too many men to the system and those that we're not losing a large percentage of them are falling victim to a mentality of devaluing the things they're supposed to be protecting and I mean that with our elderly I mean it definitely with our black women but I also am talking about our children When I started to do research on African-American adolescent and young adult male violence, it was for the sole purpose of coming up with a clear understanding of the primary driving force behind violence among our youth, among our youth. And what I was able to discover is there are five I've shared them with you before. Primary influences. Urban hassle. Being the witness of violence, being the victim of violence, lack of proper racial socialization, and the feeling of being disrespected. And 
that's in reverse order. So the most prevalent and powerful influence is the feeling of being disrespected. While we cannot easily manage that because the idea of what uh, defines respect is missing. Why? Because we haven't properly racially socialized our boys. So most of them feel anything that's said to them, anything that hurts their feelings, anything that makes them feel uh, less than is a form of disrespect and they push back with what they only know as power which is their anger and their force and they don't understand that that's actually weakness why because they haven't been properly racially socialized when you socialize a young black male this is what we do when we're dealing with young black boys i sit down when i work with boys or when i train other men to work with boys the idea is to explain to them the progression that they're going to experience before they experience it you don't want things taking them by surprise so when they're four five six seven we're already explaining to them what's going to happen when they go through puberty we're explaining to them that things are going to change, that they are going to see a change in their voice, that they are going to become bigger and stronger than their female counterparts of the same age, and that they're going to become a little bit more edgy and aggressive and be willing to tangle and, 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 and engage physically, and that they must understand that this new strength this new aggression, this new depth in voice is not meant to intimidate, to harm, or to mishandle her. It's meant for you to protect her. You're now the wall between anything that desires to harm her. It has to come through you first. And that aggression that you feel that came with the rise in testosterone that's going to continue on until you reach the age of 30, that is there for you to be ready to tangle, be ready to do what you have to do. It's that it's what's needed. The physical part makes you capable. The aggression makes you willing, and those things are the things you get to. And then you you, you got to start preparing them after they go through puberty for them to move into full-blown adolescence because at the age of 14 and 15, as they really, truly immerse themselves in their adolescent years, there's going to be a need of understanding of vision and direction. Where do they belong? Who am I? How do I fit into this? What's my relationship with God? What am I going to do for a living? What am I going to do in this life? What's my purpose? And if they don't have it, they become frustrated. They become disruptive. They don't have a sense of identity. I'm, I can't tell you the importance of knowing who you are in this world male or female, but when you're talking about a black man, the most targeted person on this planet, you're talking about someone who needs to know who they are, not only so that they can be safe, but so that they can be the best version of themselves. Because if I don't know who I am, I'll buy into someone else's vision of me, someone else's definition of me, someone else's idea of what I should be. I'll look at the imagery and say, that's what I'm supposed to be. This is how I'm supposed to act. All I'm ever going to be is. No, you write the narrative. You get to define yourself. But if we don't invest that, if we don't create these opportunities, if we don't take the chance to surround these young black males with the right type of influences, if we don't take the time to sit up and, and, and pour into them with love, but we need to do it in a way that there's accountability. And the only way that you can ever hold someone accountable is they've got to see you doing what you're asking them to do. So they need to see us and how we handle. And I think the thing, the biggest thing that really frustrated me about this video is, is, is this thing where this dude did this and nobody held him accountable. Men everywhere. And nobody held them accountable. I get it. We're afraid. You 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 get up there, and you 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 go try to help somebody. You can get hurt. I, I get it. It's happened. So I know it can happen. But let me tell you something. It, it, one thing a man has to be is a person who has something for which he is willing to die. Now, when you're young, you die for stupid stuff. You die for blocks you don't own. You die for colors that that you didn't create. You die for spaces that have no real, true, intrinsic value because that's all you got, symbols. But when you get older, you start to realize that 
I have an influence. I have power. I have the capacity and the capability to do something. I'm going to exert my force mentally, emotionally, psychologically, not to f harm anyone that's not trying to harm me, but to make sure that those I'm responsible for are covered. And that's the thing that we are missing here. But what happens? We're sitting around and we are not preparing these young black men. So what happens? They get there. They go through puberty. Nothing's there to set them up. They're being alienated in the school system as early as five years old, literally kindergartners being dispro black male kindergarten students being disproportionately uh, referred for special education IEPs and, and, and other assessment. They being uh, disproportionately diagnosed with ADHD and oppositional defiant disorder and other um, uh, disorders that are listed in the DSM and then prescribed psychotropic medications, mind altering medications for the purpose of creating a level of docility within them that allows those around them to be more controlling and makes them more pliable. It takes away the very thing they are meant to be because they don't believe they can be controlled. And this is normally coming from a predominantly uh, middle-aged white female teacher population. We don't have, hardly have any black heterosexual males in the classroom anymore. If your kid isn't playing sports and on that track or on that basketball court or on that football field, the chance of them coming across black men who care about them, who are going to lay down a foundation and hold them accountable, it's not happening in the classroom because they are not in there. We are missing the mark. To the average person, this is just one black female, bless her heart, uh, you know, to see the swelling on her face, she's definitely got a broken jaw. Just looking at it, her jaw is broken, the swelling is unbelievable. And she simply said she didn't want to give him her number. And his response was, F you then B, and, you know, popped off on her and hit her with a brick. Even if he would hit her with his hands, even if he would have pushed her, we've got to learn that aggression against our women are un unacceptable. You don't express your manhood by being aggressive with a woman. You express your manhood by understanding the power you have to harm and not using it against those you are meant to protect. It's about control. Your power is in your control. Knowing that you can destroy and choosing not to and knowing when you need to destroy destroy in efforts. Our women are not targets. Our women are not our enemy. I know some of them think they are. I know some of them talk like they are. I know some of them can, can be real, real violent with their mouths, some of them even with their hands. But we as men are going to have to learn how to control ourselves. Because we talk all about respect. I'm going to tell you something. The people you won't respect from will never respect you beating on a woman. Now, some people that's messed up and in the same situation as you will co-sign it, but they don't have the power to put you where you frustrated that you're not. See, you, you, you're frustrated and you, you're angry and you're taking it out on the one you're supposed to be protecting. It's time for us to sit up and have this conversation and do something. It, it, and what I think what bothers me most, and, and I probably could say it 12 times, which is so much stuff, one of, the, one of the things that really, really gets me is we have the answers. We've had answers for so many of the enigmatic issues, uh, the machinations and mechanisms that are being levied against us. We've had some unbelievable minds come and lay down foundational principles and 
uh, practices that can literally shift the very foundation on which we stand. And what do we do? We'll share it. We'll like it. We'll post it every year at the same time. But we will not come together and get behind it. We will not come together and initiate it, initialize it or whatever you want to call it. I've been telling you about the Black Men Lead program, again, two decades. I created that program primarily to stop African-American, adolescent and young adult male violence because it works. It absolutely works. It, it, it uh, tremendously reduces the proclivity to violence against themselves, against other black males, but also against black females and in the community in, at large. But here's some other things. It increases the chance that they're going to finish their education, regardless of how trifling the education is, because public education sucks. But they're going to finish the education, which, number one, reduces the risk of them becoming incarcerated and getting caught up in the system, being institutionalized into a behavior that ensures they recidivate. But not only that, it increases the chance that they will actually develop a skill set that will allow them to earn a living wage and support a family. We need to also be enforcing the idea of family. We need men back in the home with children. And we need to enforce that at an age where it's simply expected. We've got far too many children with no consistent male masculine presence in the home I love my sisters I do uh, I mean tremendously I just think it's that my sisters are the most beautiful uh, scarred but beautiful hurt but beautiful sometimes broken but beautiful women and 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 I think that with the more we give them the environment to heal the more powerful and potent their spiritual nature will become and the better we'll be as a people. But no matter how beautiful they are, no matter how committed they are, no matter how smart they get, no matter how many degrees they get, no matter how many of them approach six figures, they cannot simulate the masculine energy of a man. They can bring down their own masculine energy. It's not the same. And it diminishes who they are. We were designed with unique capacities for a reason. We've been talked out of our love for one another. We've been engineered into a gender hatred that is ripping our black nation apart. And when it's done, there won't be anything to build on. We will just be the afterthought of what once was or could have been because we won't stand up. We won't get together. We won't move in unison. We won't protect the value. We'll sit up all day long and talk about the children being the future and then turn around and won't invest in the children. Let's just call it what it is. We have been conditioned to not take action. We have been conditioned to not trust one another. We have been conditioned to look at everything else. And don't get me wrong. There's plenty of things not being done right. There are plenty of people out there doing this and doing that. But what I'm telling you is you can't stop believing in what's going on because there are a bunch of people who are doing the best they can with the little they have. And they are showing up every freaking day to do it and it's it's hard because I'm gonna tell you when you get up and you're doing it and the people you're doing it for don't even you know it, it, it seems like they don't care it seems like they're not involved it seems like they're not interested until they need you and then you get the phone call you get the text message you get the email you get the referral and you show up to the best of your ability because this, this is what you do but that's not how you build that's how you stay active and refuse not to be positive and not to be a force. How you build is you, con you, you collaborate. How you build is you come together. How you build is you find the answer and the solution and you get behind it, whether it's financial, whether, it, whether it's educational, whether it's social, dealing with violence, dealing with uh, uh, 
family issues, dealing with mental health. I, I keep telling you about the rising, rising level of depression in the black community, the rising level of suicide in, in the black community among our young people. I keep telling you about it and you know, it's like, oh my God, oh my God, shake man. None of that changes anything. Shaking my head doesn't change anything. Saying, oh my God, doesn't change anything because God's looking at you and saying, you have everything you need to be a difference maker. You have everything you need to be a part of the solution. You have everything you need to stand out and sit up and do something other than say, oh my God, I gave you the power. But we're sitting here and we're looking at something like this. You hit her with a brick. Literally, you hit her with a brick. And see, like I said, it's going to be easy to sit up and talk about what a piece of crap this kid is for hitting her with a brick. It, it's easy. That's an easy one. That's an easy go-to. That's safe. He's trash. He ain't nothing. He, he's evil. He's the epitome of evil. He's a punk. Whatever you want to call him, he's all of that. It's an easy go-to, but nobody is going to talk about the fact that that punk, that 25-year-old, however old he was, guy that, 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 that hit that woman with a brick was a 7-year-old, a 5-year-old at one time and didn't get the proper influence and the proper guidance. Yes, there are going to be kids that you give them everything and they're still going to screw up, but that's not the case with our kids. You can look at the correlation between the lack of proper modeling, the lack of racial socialization, the lack of an environment where the kid feels safe. I've told you about adverse childhood experiences. There's a reason why these uh, reentry programs are contacting me to do these workshops because at some point we got to acknowledge the fact that if we keep sending them parents to prison, we're just by going to prison, we're already setting this kid up. If not for prison, for poor health conditions, for poor performance in school, for poor, poor uh, skill preparation and preparation to move in life and earn a decent living, we're, we're hamstringing them right out the gate. And the only way to stop it is to st stop him before he becomes dad. And then if he's, we stop him, he's the beginning of something new. He gets his kid. He keeps his kid. He's there for his kid. We show him how to re uh, socialize his kid. We are there for him when it becomes overwhelming with his kid. We ride with him. That's how you do it. We're going to have to build something. I said this a long time ago. I'm going to say this and then I'll be done. Look, for us to really truly change what we're dealing with here, what, for us to truly change what's going on uh, in our communities, we're going to need black men who are willing to plant seeds that we may not live long enough to see come to fruition ain't no quick fix here the generation that's going to be the change is is the four five six seven eight nine year olds that's the that's the change generation if we get them right we take care of them we treat them right by the time they're 35 they will be the catalyst but if we don't get them now if we don't pour into them if we're just constantly looking for something we can get a pat on the back so we can get recognition so somebody can say, look what he did. We're going to keep putting band-aids on bullet wounds and it's going to look good for a second and then it's going to start to hemorrhage later and we're going to keep dying. We're going to have to be willing to start with these babies, create an environment of safety, security, insulate them from all of that negative bull crap that's constantly being thrown at them, teach them who they are, cover them until it inculcates into the deepest recesses of their psyche, and then we prepare them. We fully and holistically educate them through empowerment and, and preparation. They go out into a world. They're ready. They know who they are. They don't fall for the okie doke They don't easily crumble. They're not emotionally uh, unhinged. That's our responsibility. really a brick and I heard dudes in the background what we supposed to do not a man in the bunch not a man in the bunch yeah I get it I get it man dudes will lay you down for challenging them now so we're going to be a bunch of little bitches Excuse me, this is just it. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to sit up there. We done gave up the community. We're just going to turn it over to them and let them totally destroy it until they gentrify them and run them out of there and put them all in prison. 
when I go out there, man, like I said, sure, I mean, I ain't, what, but a month off, a month, little over a month and a half off of almost being shot, trying to be in, in the, let me tell you something, Dr. King said this, and I believe it, I ain't trying to leave this place early, no, I'm not, I'm trying to live to 95, 100, I am, I'm trying, but what I won't do is sit idly by and watch the black community fall apart watch my family fall apart i'll fight to the bitter end and i'll die first i'm not gonna do it i'm i i, I refuse that dr king said it and i believe it to the most inner parts of my soul that a man who doesn't have something for which he is willing to die is not fit to live what you what are you willing to die for i'm willing to die to protect the black sister not not one walking in, shooting up, robbing a place. No, I'm talking about somebody standing there minding her bitch, and somebody comes up and try to harm her. I'm I'm willing to step in and do it and do it as peacefully as I possibly can, knowing that it may escalate. But understand, I know how to defend myself, and I'm prepared to do so. But the last thing I want to do is take the life of a young black male, even if he's acting an ass, because I know there's another side somewhere deep in there. And I've done a pretty decent job of reaching some of these kids. Well, a lot of them over the years. They, I mean, I've reached, I've, I've reached some of the most hardened convicts. You find there's a heart underneath all that, but somebody hurt it. Somebody abandoned it. Somebody left it. And see, as a person who never knew his father. I know your pain, kid. For, for, from a person who the first time he saw his pops was in a casket. I feel you. I, 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 I do. But you got to own your own future. You got to own your own destiny. You got to own your own opportunities. You got to lay a path. You can't walk carrying the baggage that your dad left you. That's his whether he's alive or whether he's dead. But what we've got to be brothers are men willing to stand in for the men who aren't there. Now, I'm going to say this and I'm done. I'm not perfect. But I love heart. I love my people. I love my family. And I'll go to the mat for them. I make mistakes like anybody else. I have my ups and downs like anybody else. I feel and I hurt like anyone else. But nobody can tell you they reached out to me and I told them no. I may have told them, hey, you may have to wait a minute. Give me a minute. I'm doing the best I can because I've said yes so many times with no resources. Well, no resources for the center. So guess who had to be the person to cover it? And I'm saying this because people will find everything and every reason not to believe in you, not to do anything with you, not to give, not to work with you, not to celebrate you. You're going to have to learn how to be out there and understand. There ain't one person out there from uh, that's perfect. That's why I don't preach, teach or deal with anyone from a platform of perfection. I'm a man just trying to be the best version I can be today, trying to touch this world in a way that it's better than it was when I found it. And that's it. With that being said, I'm gonna get out of here. Uh, thank you for your time. If you believe in anything I said, click that like button, share your comments, subscribe, let me know how you feel. Brothers, let me know how you feel. Sisters, you carrying a lot of weight. One more thing. I said I was done. One more thing before I, I go. And definitely give. Definitely support. We need your support. But hey, to my sisters, don't think for a second I don't know what you've been through. That I don't know why you're frustrated. That I don't know why you're angry. That I don't know why you have a hard time trusting and that sometimes you can be uh, overbearing, belligerent, and hostile towards the black man. Uh, not all of us have lived a life of trying to harm or being disrespectful. 
I, I can I can say with certainty that we've all made mistakes, but let me tell you something. You're upset because you're waiting on that apology from that person who's probably never going to give it to you. You're upset because you're waiting for that person to come back and fix what they broke. You're upset because you're tired of carrying the weight that they left you with. You're upset. So what I'm going to do is, uh, on, for, for, for every woman that's had to rear the progeny of a man who decided to bounce, for every woman who's trying to hold down a brother on lockdown, and he doesn't know how to act when he gets home for every woman that's out there working two and three jobs to hold it together and you've done it for you for everyone who feels like they've been left behind and that the man hasn't stood up i apologize that may be the best you get but you need to heal you need to come together you need to find yourself too We've got to build young girls who are safe and secure in who they are. And we need to build them so that the men that we're building can connect with them and trust. We've, we've got a lot of work to do. We've got to restore the family. But I just had to touch on that. And I did not mean to go 35, 36 minutes, but um, it is what it is. Again, if you believe in the work we're doing, show some love and give. On that note, I'm going to check out of here, but thank you for giving me your time. You guys have an unbelievable remainder of your Labor Day. I'm out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They said I should give it up. Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse. Uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you.